Podcast. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. This is another special Wednesday morning episode brought to you by our sponsor, Jeremy Clevenger Fitness, who we featured on episode 145. Now, if you've listened to the show for a while, you know that Jeremy helped me get in the best shape of my life in 2022, and he is helping me push it even further this year. So if you're working on your health and fitness goals in 2023, I highly recommend you put Jeremy in your corner. I guarantee he will help you reach your goals this year. There are links in the show notes to find all of his services. I'm also excited to announce a new sponsor to the show, the Sasquatch Flag Company. Sasquatch Flag Company is a family-owned business in New England that builds hand and carved American flags from seasoned white pine. Now, if you watch these episodes on YouTube, you will see one of their flags behind me in the studio. Now, I love giving these flags away, and I've been giving them as gifts for years, and I can't recommend them enough. So go to sasquatchflags.com and check out all other unique designs. I have another great show lined up for you today, but before we get started, I just want to remind you to check out the leadership books I've written on either Amazon or my website, johnsrenny.com. This year, I'm offering a new way to purchase all of my books for a discount. I've bundled the books into what I call the Qualified Watchstander Series, and you get all three books for 15% off the individual prices. This offer is only available on my website, so check it out if you're looking to step up your leadership game in 2023. Well, that is it. Today, we're going to be talking about building a prepared mind. And my guest is Lieutenant Colonel Brian Slade. Brian is a highly decorated Apache gunship combat pilot who served in Afghanistan. He joins us today to talk about building a prepared mind to deal with anything that you're going through. Now, Brian has been through a lot, and his stories and advice are powerful. This is a discussion that I know you're going to love. So, are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Brian Slade. Brian has held command positions in the Army and the Air Force and has received the Distinguished Flying Cross, Bronze Star, and 14 Combat Air Medals. He currently serves as Lieutenant Colonel for Air Force Combat Search and Rescue, and he is the author of a new book called Cleared Hot, Lessons Learned About Life, Love, and Leadership While Flying the Apache Gunship in Afghanistan, and Why I Believe... A prepared mind can help minimize PTSD. Brian joins us to talk about how to prepare our minds to help us fight and find success in whatever we do. So, Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks, John. Thanks for that intro. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it is an honor to meet you, and it's an honor to hear your story and, and uh, be on the podcast and, and have the listeners hear, hear from you, because I think you've had a remarkable uh, military career and We'd love to hear about it and and the lessons that you learned. So let's just uh, let's let's um, talk about your uh, your story. Uh, How did you end up in Afghanistan, and what did you do there? How did I end up in Afghanistan? Well, (laughs) that's like a loaded question, right? (laughs) Yes. Um, I I raised my hand to the square and said yes. You know, Um, basically, I enlisted. In 1970, so 1997, 1997, and um, didn't really deploy to Afghanistan until 2007 or 2006, 2007. And, uh, you know, 9 11 happened in between there, obviously. Um, and <laughs> after 9 11 happened, it was me chasing units to try to get deployed to Afghanistan. And uh, once I finished Apache, uh, tr- school. I, I actually did it at a location there, co-located with a unit in uh, Tucson, Arizona, that was getting that was on the docket to go deploy. And so I reached out to them and said, "Hey, uh, if you'll make me a platoon leader in one of your line companies, i.e., I want to fly, not be an admin we need while we're gone, um, then I'll I'll, I'll 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 gladly come with you guys." And they they took me up on that offer. And lo and behold, that's that's what happened. I ended up in Afghanistan. I actually ended up 
first boots on the ground for our unit in Afghanistan because I was the the uh, unit movement officer for our company and was on the Advon party. And, uh, you know, so my first step into theater was uh, without my team, which was interesting. Mm, wow. What was the situation like there? What was your mission? And how much of it was was eye-opening to you? Because it's one thing to train in the military, but it's another thing to be placed in a combat zone. You know, that's a, that's a really good question. And, and honestly, goes right into what I was starting to say is when I got there, I didn't know what to expect. Right. I hadn't been there before. And, and as I was deploying as part of a guard unit, neither had anybody that we were going with. So there wasn't a lot of those guys that I could be like, hey, what's it going to be like? You know, what's this, what, 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 what can I expect? And it was during a time when the news was all Iraq, 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 Iraq. You know, you just didn't hear Afghanistan. You know? And honestly, we thought we were getting kind of like the JV tournament uh, because we, you know, we hadn't heard about Afghanistan. We didn't think much was going on and we were wrong. But, um, you know, we didn't know, you know. And so when we landed, me and two of the sergeants that I traveled with, maintainers, it was early morning. And uh, we landed in in Bagram, uh, Afghanistan, and in the back of that clamshell, the C-17 with three of our Apache helicopters, it opened up and, you know, it was kind of like in, in a movie where it was dark and then the, the, it started to be bright light. You couldn't really see anything because your eyes were starting to adjust and, and you're waiting to see what there is. And uh, first thing that hit me was the smell. And I was like, man, it doesn't smell that bad. It smells kind of good. And I just, you know, I kind of expected you know, it's a war is going to stink or something, you know, and, yeah. you know, I went back to Afghanistan a couple of times. If I would have went to Kandahar, it would have stoked, but I was in Bagram and it, it actually smelled pretty good. And my second surprise is as that door continued to descend, uh, I saw what looked like the Rocky mountains, the beautiful snow capped mountains. And I was like, Whoa, you know, this, this isn't what I expected at all, you know? And it was one of those lessons on, beauty in the midst of ugliness, you know, and, and that's one of those things that I learned through the the tour is to, to keep that mindset, you know, that the, the beauty is permanent and the, the ugliness is, is temporary. Mm. How, how long were you there? I was there on this deployment for uh, just over a year, mm. just over a year. We had actually, it was a 23 month deployment total because our guard unit, we were alpha model Apache qualified. We had to get unit field training certified in the uh, longbow helicopter. And that was an eight month, a little over an eight month deployment for Texas. It was all back to back. So, you know, honestly, I, I didn't like the Texas part more than I didn't like the theater part because you were in the U.S. and you still couldn't see your family. It was, it was kind of a, a long, long stint without seeing people. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And when did you start flying uh, in combat missions? So we got there in, pretty much right off the bat, you know, it, within a week we were flying. And, um, at first it was just ring routes and a ring route is, uh, for those that don't know what that means is like supply, a uh, supply route where we're, we're bringing, you know, the, the forward operating bases, food, mail, all those kind of things. We're not the ones carrying it. We're actually escorting the Blackhawks and the Chinooks that are the utility helicopters that are supplying that stuff and we're just there to you know bring the you know teddy roosevelt speaks softly but carry a big stick we were the big stick you know so um the, you know to deter any kind of interaction with the utility helicopters and and that's what we started out too and and you know when we pulled out took off at first you know my head swelled around i was all anxious because i hadn't been there before and I was really trying to look for Johnny Taliban and actually rub my neck raw on my my load bearing vest just because I have like, you know, that full back type neck. And uh and it, and once again I was just looking at the landscape and like, man, I just couldn't get over how pretty it was with the snow and everything. And then finally we did get called into what's called the troops in contact or a tick, uh, you know, to support the ground elements who were under fire and uh, in an effective way by the Taliban. But it was an interesting contrast for me because we were up there in the beauty, looking at the mountains and the majesty. And like I said, that's something that's permanent. It's always there. It's not going anywhere. But then we just get called into the gunfight. As we get called into the gunfight, the, the whole field changes. You got the guy on the radio who's noticeably under duress. You can hear gunfire in the background. He says he's taking effective fire, needs immediate suppression. Ask for that from us because that's what we do. And of course, we're like, yep, that's what we're going to do. We'll take care of this. So as we roll in, we become focused on that gunfight. We become focused on that what 
that what I would call the finite actions, the things that are that seem overwhelming and seem permanent in the moment because you're so focused on them. It's the wedge of the piece of the pie that you only piece you can see at that moment because it is your 50 meter target. It is your front sight post. It's what you're focused on right then. And the interesting part to me is while we're doing that and we were engaging the enemy and they were engaging us and then, you know, there's some adrenaline and some infusion of, of uh, intensity in there. Those mountains with their majesty and all that beauty never went anywhere, right? They were still there. They were still in the background. They were still the infinite. While we were focused on the finite, thinking and treating it as if it was the infinite. And that is the metaphor that I like to use with a lot of these guys, That a lot of things that happen. A lot of times when people feel there's no way out, people feel they're in too deep or they feel they're just overwhelmed, it's because they're focused on that front sight post. They're focused on that gunfight and they forgot that the mountains are still there, right? They're not remembering that the infinite is still there. I'm one more step as you, or two more steps. If you raise up and you get even higher and you start to see the curvature of the earth, I don't care if we're over the ugliest place on the planet. And I say this in most of my podcasts because I really like this analogy and I think it brings home the importance and understanding of what the big picture is. I don't care if you're over the ugliest place on the planet, it's majestic and beautiful. And then if you go into space, which and, it's, and when you're the curvature of the earth, it's majestic and beautiful in every direction, right? Every direction. You raise up into space and you see the globe, this electric body that we call a planet with the clouds over it and the, the contrast of the blues and the browns and the greens. This has got to be awe-inspiring. And the crazy part about that is that beauty is not in every direction because there is no direction. Mm. It just is. It just is. And that's the truth of infinite. It's not a thing that's in a direction or has a limit or whatever. It is infinite and it just is. And you look at that beautiful planet and how many gunfights are happening on that planet at any given. How many gunfights are happening right now? Mm. Real, metaphorical, or otherwise? And how many people have been hoodwinked into thinking that is the, the infinite? How many people have have been fooled to believe that there is there is no way out of that? And that's where you get the helplessness, and that's where you get the the things that that we're we're trying to fight against as as people getting to that ultimate decision of you know maybe even taking their own life, right? So that's a long way to answer that question, but that was no, really- but it- it, it leads into, yeah, I think it leads into what I want to talk about, which is your book. The book is called Cleared Hot. Um, you know, tell us uh, why, tell us about the book and why you wrote it and what, what are you hoping to achieve with this book? Well, first of all, Cleared Hot, for those that aren't military, means that you've met all the directives to engage with lethal force or ordinance, right? And I chose that title purposefully. Because the intent of the book is to teach through military lessons, um, applications in everyday life, no matter who you are, to enable you to understand that you have the authority to be cleared hot on your life, right? You have the authority to engage with purpose and decisiveness on your life. Don't let that crap hold you back, man. And so really the reason I wrote the book was I, I, I had all kinds of crazy experiences. You know, I was, you know... You you mentioned the video that you watched and listened to. That was one of them, but there's lots while I was there, right? Uh, Gunfights and getting shot up and having to do emergency procedures and landing and and just, you know, not kissing the ground, but pretty close to kissing the ground, you know? Um, I'm just being grateful um, that that I'm on the side I'm on and that I was allocated the resources I was allocated and that was with the team I was with and, and all those things. But because of those experiences, there was a lot of lessons I learned from them. And when I looked around at my peers as time passed on and morphed on, I realized that we were all exposed to similar situations, but it affected us all differently. Mm. Right? There were those that actually grew from the experiences and they became foundational pieces in a better versions of themselves. I would put myself in that category. I'm not saying that I didn't have any negative impacts based off of the in, the experiences had, but overall, 
it was growth oriented. Overall, I saw that it happened for me, not to me. Mm. Then when I started to look around, that was not universally the story. And in fact, some people were buried and bogged down in that gunfight. Some people, that's all they were seeing. And they, and it wasn't a thing in their past that was foundational. It was in their present and an obstacle. Right. And that started to start me thinking. I'm like, how can we have so many people experience very similar things, but such a different array or spectrum of reaction? And uh, so I really started to get together with some people, psychologists, professionals, mental health people, and and dissect that. And um, they, they did they to do that. They dug into what I was doing. They're like, well, let's see where let's let's use you as the as the uh, test the science test, but whatever you want to call it, the petri dish, if you will. And uh, we, we would call that a, you're a positive deviant. In other words, you you went through the same trauma, but came out with 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 a pos- with growth, right? So we, you know, sometimes that's called a positive deviant. So I would say, yeah, we'd like to figure out why, you know, if I were studying and, and writing a book on this, I'd like to know why you came out that way. Yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about you calling me a deviant, but okay, we'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll roll with that positive, positive deviant. deviant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so really, what we boiled down to, there was some things, you know, that I they they broke into like my my childhood, my growing up, my my day to day rituals while I was deployed, before I was deployed, and after I was deployed, and we we're able to find certain things that were in- teachable, like that we could teach to people to prepare or repair as the case may dictate. Um, there was also things that are not teachable, right? I can't control what kind of abuse or what kind of trauma you were previously exposed to as a child that can control. We can't teach the, the strength that is fostered by having a nuclear family. We can't teach that you either do or you don't have those things. And I believe all of us come to this world with our own little set of who we are, that, that, that it is our wiring. And some wiring is more predisposed to digest those type of uh, experiences in a way that is beneficial, while others is more predisposed to, to actually be damaged by it. Um, doesn't mean that that damage can't be turned into a strength, though. And so what we started to distill was the things that were teachable, the things that I was doing that were, that you could teach to anybody. And there was like seven different techniques that, I mean, not techniques, but principles that we, there were more, but those were what we really kind of focused on in the book. And, um, and from there, you know, we, we do have a training that we've developed that is trying to help people to, to employ those in their lives. Right. Where you can experience growth from trauma. Because here's one thing that we all know. And I think nobody's going to argue with me. Trauma is powerful. Right. Trauma is powerful because it has the power to keep people in that gunfight and even ultimately take their lives at times or turn you into a superhero. It's a lightning bolt. I use this analogy because a lightning bolt can kill you with one hit or it can light a city. And it's all a matter of how you use that power. It's all a matter of how you see that power, how you receive that power, right? And all of us aren't set up to receive it the right way yet, you know? And and that's why I don't say any of the, my brothers and sisters and, and arms that come back and people call them broken, I say, no, you're not broken. You're not broken. You've actually been given a gift that we just got to figure, we just got to teach you how to utilize that, harness that power. You experienced ugly and right now you're keeping that ugly inside of you, but you can be in the ugly, but not have the ugly operated you. Mm. I mean, and once you can definitively draw an outliner that barriers you between those two things and know that you experienced it and that experience can be drawn upon and put it as a foundational piece rather than a, than a defining piece in your, in your present, right? If that is not... You are not that incident. You experienced that incident. Even if you were participating, it's still the experience. So trauma is powerful, and it's all about harnessing that power. It's all about digesting it, accepting it, 
and putting it where it needs to be, and that's under your feet. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Leadership skills are like any other skills. You need to practice them to get better at them. Best-selling leadership author John S. Rennie knows this. That's why he's written a new book called You Have the Watch. It's a guided journal for leaders designed to take you through an entire year of leadership training. By the end of the year, you will master 50 of the most important leadership skills. If you want to have a greater impact on the results and people in your organization, go to youhavethewatch.com and pick up your copy today. This episode is brought to you by Jeremy Clevenger Fitness. As a high-performing leader, you know that leadership isn't about telling people what to do. It's about leading by example. And for most people, the one area that they're lacking when it comes to leading by example is their health and fitness. By improving your health and fitness, every other area of your life improves. But how do you get and stay fit as a busy leader? Well, you do what you've always done. You hire the best person for the job. Don't struggle on your own. Put Jeremy Clevenger on your team. Jeremy will work with you to take your physique, mindset, nutrition, nutritional habits, and more to the next level with his step-by-step, all-inclusive coaching program. Now, I've worked with Jeremy for the past year, and I'm in the best shape of my life. If you want to step up your game, reach out to Jeremy at apexperformancesystems.com to find out more and get your initial consultation scheduled with him today. This episode is brought to you by the Sasquatch Flag Company. The Sasquatch Flag Company is a family-owned business in New England that builds hand-carved American flags from seasoned white pine. Each flag is hand built and each star on the flag is hand hammered and chiseled no two flags are alike they offer a variety of flag designs to honor the police military firefighters dispatchers and search and rescue personnel to name a few these stunning handmade flags look great in an office a studio the back porch or above the fireplace mantle they make the perfect gift for the veteran first responder or patriot in your life now i love these flags and i've been giving them as gifts for years and i was a customer long before they became a sponsor of the show. I can't recommend them enough. So if you're looking for that perfect, uniquely American-made gift to give away, or if you want to treat yourself, go to sasquatchflags.com and get your order in today. So I imagine that, you know, there's a lot of veterans who can appreciate this book. Is this book also, you know, written such that people who have experienced trauma, even though they weren't in the military, they're going to get, gain something out of this book? Absolutely. That's why, you know, uh, I, did, I didn't I didn't say military trauma, right? I did that on purpose. You know, trauma is trauma. Pain is pain. You know, dealing and coping is dealing and coping. Perspective is perspective. These are all universal. They have nothing to do with where you acquired your trauma. And, you know, <laughs> I call it trauma envy sometimes. Like, people are like, well, you know, I've never experienced anything like your trauma. Well, I don't know. Because here's the deal. In my book, I talk about some pretty harrowing, heinous situations where we're blowing up people and they're like they're trying to blow us up. And sometimes they're blowing up our people. And that's all, you know, the type of stuff that people are like, oh, you know, they do this. But I was also in a very caustic relationship with a woman who had a mental disorder, borderline personality and a disorder while I was gone. And in many ways, I experienced much more trauma from interacting and trying to interact with that relationship than I did from trying to navigate the dynamics of a of Taliban and engaging with lethal force against that enemy. You know, and a relationship is something that I think a lot of people can can relate to, right? And a lot of people have experienced trauma through relationships. So I, often that is where it comes from and and I, I'm I'm here to say I've experienced some of these things that people would put in a, whatever you want to call it, the class A trauma or whatever when they, when they call trauma envy. But if you're pre- part of it, when I say why I believe a prepared mind can uh, benefit you with PTSD, is that my mind was prepared pretty well for that kind of trauma, for the war trauma. And I came out of it growing from it. Now, my mind was not prepared for the intricacies of a difficult relationship to a woman who had mental illness. I didn't have preparation for that. I didn't I didn't chair fly that, which is one of the principles that we teach is chair fly. I didn't I didn't do those things for that. So it impacted me negatively. I had to actually repair from that where I was prepared for the other. Mm, okay. How does, you know, as as people are listening into this and they maybe they've experienced some trauma and they're still 
you know, has lingering effects on their confidence, uh, their their focus, their what they want to do in life. Um, they just can't seem to get over that issue. They've already experienced the trauma. What's, you know, what what things, what are some next steps or wh- where should they be? Where do they start, I guess, is the, the, the tough part. We call that being stuck. Yeah, right? that's right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we, we call that being stuck. And and I'll be, you know, we, we do have a training we're putting together that tells people, teaches people how to get unstuck. Um, and it's a lot more, I will say this, it's it's simply complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I imagine. Right? At the end of the day, it's simple. You're the ones getting yourself stuck. You're the one holding you in that mire. Mm-hmm. But how, if it's that simple... And how do I, I mean, that's good news, bad news, right? The good news it is, you if you're the one holding you there, you're the one that can let yourself get out. You're the one that can get yeah. yourself out. Nobody else is holding you there. Yeah. Right? But the bad news is, if you're the one holding you there, you haven't figured it out yet. Right? Yeah. yeah. And you're like, well, wait a minute. If I'm, if I'm, in, if I'm the one keeping me stuck, that, that can't be because I would just not, I would just not let myself be stuck. And, and without going into too much of the process, because there, that's a, I mean that's a whole course worth of getting people through. But but really, it's just accepting accepting that experience and that there are no coincidences. Everything that happens happens for you, not to you. Mm. We say we say this all the time. So and so came up through the rough knocks and this happened to him and that happened to him and this happened to him and despite all odds they became this amazing person mm, yeah and yeah. i and i and i say nope uh, mm. because of all odds yeah they yeah. became that person right that stuff happened for them obstacles trials all those things are just cleverly disguised opportunities but we have to see them for that we have to see what came or came from or could come from that those obstacles and trials recognize and accept the experience it's interesting because i you know i've obviously i've not uh experienced you know combat like like you have but um but i've been through some hard times in my days in the military and what one of the things i've always felt like is those difficult situations uh you know, months, you know, months at sea, uh, you know, uh, like in one case, uh, you know, winter in the North Atlantic, you know, just, just rough seas for weeks on end. And, and, uh, but, you know, when you go through those really difficult moments, you know, in my mind, at least, or at least in my experience is that it's like a new high water mark for you. Like, well, if I've got through that, I can get through anything or I can get through things that are difficult. I've been through something very difficult and, it's it's almost like it, it uh, for me at least it's it, it gives me confidence I can I can withstand difficulties in the future and it's certainly as an entrepreneur you know starting a company has been difficult but nothing compared to some of the things I went through in the military so to me it's never been difficult because I've 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 been hardened you know over some of these tough situations is it similar that way when you say these things are done for you and not to you. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. You're talking about difficult things that you've done in the past and you're looking back at them and realizing that you gained you gained a perspective by getting through that. You gained a perspective that helped you move forward with other endeavors. You create you 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 may have engaged, I always say you engage in something and you get through it and 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 that if you look backwards it's easy to see the gains. It's easy to see that most of the biggest gains, the biggest growth, it all came from some of the hardest things that you've ever done, whether they were self-initiated or if it was just circumstantial. You get through it. On the backside, you almost always have your biggest gains, right? Sometimes those gains are self-imposed, like goals, right? A goal is just an obstacle that we put in our. There's a self-imposed obstacle, but. We put, you set a goal, you reach a goal, and then you look back, you had the biggest growth. We can see that looking backwards pretty clearly, but what we fail to do is when we see it looking forward or in the present. And I always tell people, I'm like, look back, start counting those gains, start counting those wins and see where they came. And then the next time you're sitting there and you're like, man, this is tough. You're starting a new business, like you're saying, holy crap, this is tough. 
you can start to relish that opportunity. You're like, the tougher this is, I mean, the bigger the, uh, when this is going to be a lesson, at least at a minimum, this is going to be a lesson learned. At a maximum, this is going to be a phenomenal experience and grow, right? So once you can bring that perspective into the present and into the future from the lessons learned by the look, perspective gained by looking at their gains in the past, and once you became, you, you, you create a habit of doing that, Man, whenever something bad's happening, you relish it. You know, embrace the suck, right? We talk about that in the military. Right? Yeah, yeah. And he always said that, but I never really saw it this way, right? Like I was like, yeah, embrace the suck because don't seek it out necessarily. But when you're in it, understand that's a growth opportunity. Yeah, that's everything for you. It's interesting. I mean, maybe it's a silly analogy, but this morning I, I I have a weight room, and you know, in my house, and and it's leg day on Tuesdays, and I do, you know, and I I get my leg day in, right, and uh, and it hurts, and it, it you know, and you and you feel the pain over the you know several days afterwards, and you know, the the common thing with weightlifters is don't skip leg day, right, and the reason why you don't skip leg day is because that's where you get your gains, but you got to go through the pain to get the growth, and I think that some of what you're saying is that we develop. Um, strength as we go through these, have these experiences as long as we have the right mindset going into it. Right. And then, and, and, you know, you can use that analogy with weight training applies to so many places. It just, even in the fact that of what I just said, yeah, that perspective, taking the perspective from looking backwards and playing it forward, that sounds easy. You have to practice it. Just, mm -hmm. you have to stretch that muscle. You have to stretch it, practice it until it becomes easy. You know, you know, when you're squatting one plate and it's it's really, really hard and you keep doing it and all of a sudden you can squat one plate 15 times and it's not as hard anymore, right? Yeah. So after a while, after a while, it becomes easy to see when you're in the midst of difficulty that it's an opportunity. Mm. But it doesn't just happen by like having this epiphany right now. You have to practice it day in and day out. In the morning, you got to like notice your wins from the from the day, day before and and, the, and plan the wins you're going to have that day and the evening categorize them again you know create habits of at you know the attitude of gratitude stuff really does help you focus on the perspective of growing from obstacles or difficulties or tribes um, yeah absolutely so when when people buy the book and read the book what what are they going to i mean you're going to take them on a wild ride right <laughs> You're going to tell them stories, uh, but you're also going to teach lessons, right? That's what been throughout this book. So <laughs> I wrote it in a way I really wanted it to apply to not just military, as far as the lessons learned go, and be entertaining read for pretty much anybody. But I don't want to get overly didactic in the in, in the book itself. So um, the book, if you're just looking to read a military story and be entertained, you will. There's a, there's a lot of crazy, intense stories and if you're looking to for personal growth and you're looking for it you'll see it you'll feel it i don't get like i said i don't get overly didactic i do kind of hit on a little bit of the lessons at the end of each chapter but it's 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 insidious i'm sneaking them in there right and then at the very end of the book in the epilogue we really kind of talk about the science behind some of the things that i was trying to just kind of hit along the way um, and, and then there's a website that they can, that we go into it further. And then, like I said, we have the transformation training where we're trying to, where it's trauma to triumph, right? We're taking trauma and turning it into triumph. We're taking that lightning bolt and landing up a city. That's what we're doing. Right. This is so good and so important. And there's so many guys out there that are, you know, and, and women that are stuck, you know, and I think that they, they've, they've faced some trauma, whether it was, whether they're veterans in face of trauma you know, in the military experience or they face trauma in their life at some point. And you're right, it, it's an anchor holding them back. And I think that, you know, this this book is a great way to start thinking about things differently. I like your analogy, the infinite versus the finite. You know, the there's a, there's a deadly battle, there's a violence happening right here, but you look up and there's the mountains and there's the curvature of the earth and there's something that's, that's beautiful. And it's, and it's, so we sometimes our focus is in the wrong place and we've got to take our, we got to lift our eyes up a little bit and look in a different direction if we're going to want to get through some of the stuff. And so it's not holding us back. So I'm really, uh, Brian, I really appreciate you coming on the show. The, the book is called Clear It Hot. Uh, how can people find out more about you, the book, and some of the training that you offer? Yes, yeah, so we have clearedhot.info is the website. So it's .info, not .com. Um, 
there, the website does have, uh, we actually recently, for some reason, all the links got jacked up, but we're fixing that. Don't worry. We'll get it fixed. Um, and then I don't even know, I, I'm not, a, I'm not the nerd. I don't know how to do all that stuff. Um, but I got the right nerds working on it and then the world and, and, and nerds are what make the world go around. I'm not saying that derogatory. I'm, uh, I'm a nerd, so that's fine. <laughs> so I embrace, I embrace and I actually covet the abilities. I just, I don't have them myself. Right. So we're working on that, but um, obviously the book's available on um, Amazon and on the website, but you'll get it faster through Amazon. And uh, the audio audible book, audio book should be out um, by the time you, you air this, I'm hoping, or pretty close after. And then I read it. Let me tell you. Yeah, that's harder than you think. Oh, no, no, no. It's so hard that I've not read my own books because it it is a process and it is, uh, I don't have the patience for it. So I have, uh, I have voice actors doing all my books. So it took me 16 tries. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. I just, the more I looked at it as, as being an entrepreneur and running a business and I'm actually working on a, my doctorate right now, I have no time to be, to be reading a book in a studio. So no, I, I had someone, so my hat's off to you. I respect you. I think authors should read their books. I did not read my books. So. Yeah, yeah, mad respect to the guys that do that for a living and do a well because it, yeah. it is a gift. Yeah, it is very difficult. And the talent of the the people that read my books is off the charts and I don't have that. <laughs> so Yeah, well, I, I worked on it, worked on it and got it to a point where I was like, I'm I'm okay with that. Not like I'm I'm elated with it, but I'm okay with it. So it, it should be coming out. It's all done. I'm just, it's going through the final, like they have to approve the quality and all that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, I'll, I'll give you links that you can add on here for all the socials. People can hit me up on the socials. They can direct message me on the socials and LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever. If you want to know more about that training, if you feel somebody, you know, or love that it has had a traumatic experience and it can't get past it. This is what we do. Like we take these people and unstuck them. That's a word. I just made it up. Unstuck them. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, we're going to go ahead and put links in the show notes for all these resources. Brian, uh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for sharing your story. Thanks for what you did for the country. And um, thanks for coming back and wanting to help people uh, through getting through the trauma and the things that are getting them stuck in their lives. So I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all of this. I appreciate you having me. Don't give up the ship. <laughs> Don't give up the ship. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Welcome to the Reverie Channel, where entertainment knows no bounds. Live concerts, on-demand music, documentaries, and short films, all in stunning HD. Now on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire, immerse yourself from home. And on Android and iOS for those on the move. Support creators with crowdfunding donations. Fuel their creativity. Join us in shaping entertainment's future. The Reverie Channel, where every view, every donation matters. Hey there, I'm DC. I host the Rock Podcast, Back to the Arena, the Interviews. It's about a 30-minute podcast where I talk one-on-one -on -one with a band who has released new music. You can find us on all the best podcast sites like Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, and more. If you're a rock fan like me, subscribe today to Back to the Arena, the interview. Electric Acid.